Lo and behold, after I announced the fact that I believe Barack Obama was a clone of Akhenaten and the entire family a clone of Akhenaten's families, this man came out and said, we're going to find out who's King Tut's daddy. And I said, oh, you are, are you? Now, you can watch this on the History Channel. And he announces suddenly, oh, by the way, we have the DNA of Akhenaten. So now I'm going, oh my God, you know, I've been saying all this, but I couldn't prove it because where was the DNA of Akhenaten? You see, the KD-55 mummy was found back in the 1920s. It's been a mystery for a hundred years when the body was found mummified. They didn't know whether it was male or female. And this is because Akhenaten really has a strange shape. Uh, he, he, he's known as a hermaphrodite and often depicted as such with a cone head. So he was shown, and some try to say that he has Marfan syndrome or anything that they could do to come up with an understanding of why he has such a feminine body and then, a, you know, of course being a male. And then the cone head was always a bit strange as well. So when the mummy of Akhenaten was found, it was disputed right away because one doctor said, well, you found a woman. And another doctor said, no, it's a man. And for a hundred years plus, they have debated over whether the KV-55 mummy was Akhenaten. Now in this tomb, they also found the, the elder lady and the, the younger lady, and these turned out to be Queen T and, and Marita Ten. And so now I find that they actually have the DNA of all of the, the people <laughs> of the first family, right? So Zahi Hawass comes forward and says, well, yeah, we, we do actually have the DNA of Akhenaten. I know archaeologists and anthropologists have been debating about this for over a hundred years, but we couldn't tell you we had this DNA. It was a national security secret. You can look it up. I have it linked in on Freeman TV. Check it out for yourself. Zahi Hawass said that Akhenaten's DNA was a national security secret. Why? Well, you know, to say Obama was a clone and then now have the actual DNA there to say that they could have done so, that they're announcing they do have the DNA, but of course, you know, Akhenaten had a cone head. They couldn't exactly have a cone head show back up, and uh, I don't think people would have taken that so well. And so people started asking me, well, Freeman, you know, all right, you got the DNA. You, uh, Zahi Hawass himself built a multi-million dollar DNA lab in the basement of the Cairo Museum. And then was consequently fired. He has recently been fired for uh, taking sexual favors and bribes for archaeological digs. So he's out of the picture, thank God. But he left this DNA lab. He left the DNA of Akhenaten, and he was still in power when this was going on. So they say, all right, Freeman, you know, we've got the DNA, we've got all the potentials, we have the ability to clone a mummy, we've got the ability to clone a human, uh, but if they brought Akhenaten back, why doesn't he have a cone head? Well, maybe he did. Maybe he did. Next thing I know, people are talking about Obama's head scars. Big ol' X running across the, the cone of his head as if something was removed. Now they're talking about maybe brain surgery, maybe he's a, 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 a oh, <laughs> and I think you, Manchurian candidate, and thanks for reading my mind. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe they implanted something in his head, but of course, uh, my study has been consistent, my information constant, and every time I try to come to a, you know, an example, and the next thing I know, there it is. And, and so now we've got the DNA, we've got the DNA lab, we've got the ability to clone humans, and we've got a president who looks just like Akhenaten. And then I announced that Akhenaten would, of course, have to deal with a coming space war. So when I left the talk, uh, you know, we, we discussed a lot about uh, the messianic character that is Obama. We talked about how his name, actually, Barack Obama, is Hebrew for lightning from heaven. So you can go look this up in your own concordance. Go check it out on freemantv.com if you want. I have it backed up there. Barack Obama, in the native tongue of Jesus, would be lightning from heaven. Now, if you don't know, 
The Bible de describes Satan. It says, and Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Otherwise, you could say, and Satan fell like Barack Obama, if you were talking to Jesus. <laughs> now, that's the truth of the matter. All right, there were many curious notes to go back to the satanification of America that, that have to deal with Barack Obama. And I'm just going to play you a short clip of this because I want to get into deeper stuff. If you guys want to follow this story longer, uh, of course, Obama cloning in the coming space war, uh, I didn't have the final details when I made that movie. I only had the beginning. And so now you can see that this was produced before they announced they had Akhenaten's DNA. It was produced before they announced that, they, that Obama came out on human cloning. It was produced before all of the things that are now, you know, pretty concrete evidence for me. Um, now, I'm just going to give you a little quick clip of what happens when you play Barack Obama's catchphrase, yes we can, backwards. <laughs> now, we know that's Satan's favorite tool, right? All right, so check this out. Hey, you say. Hey, you say. Okay. <laughs> that is, they, yes, we can, just simply reversed. You all heard it very clearly, I believe. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. I'm not going to make you listen to that song. Uh, but you can check this out on the front page of Freeman TV. Uh, and, and then, you know, the next thing I know that happens is, is Barack himself ends up heading off to Egypt to meet with Zahi Huas. Now, there were a lot of mysterious things that happened at this moment. And I've gotten some insider information when uh, Barack visited, and I'll, I'll, I'll leak that to you. But uh, Zahi Huas gave Barack Obama a tour of the pyramids. And in doing so, they happened to notice that Obama looked a lot like an Egyptian cartouche. And he says, Barack Obama himself says, hey, that looks like me. And Zahi says, no, 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 I think you look more like King Tut. Now, Jack Blood, he asked me about this on the air one time, saying, uh, well, what do you think about them comparing Obama to King Tut? And of course, because I believe he's actually Akhenaten, I said, well, I think they're trying to discredit me and lead everybody towards King Tut, because no one knows of Akhenaten, but everybody knows of King Tut. So they've made depictions of Obama as King Tut and everything. I'm like, nah, they're screwing the story there. The true story is that he's King Tut's daddy. And that uh, there might be some other clones out there as well, and we're going to get to them. Actually, uh, Zahi met with Beyonce at one point, and we'll talk about her uh, faked pregnancy and the potential of her having a clone, and maybe even being a clone. Uh, and of course, Zahi said, well, she's a very stupid person. <laughs> now, Zahi is a very strict and rigid Egyptologist. He wants to stand firm that there are no ancient civilizations, that slaves built the Great Pyramids, and that even though it's physically impossible, to do, we we're talking about two million stones of a weight that are superior to what we have cranes today. We couldn't lift some of the blocks that built the Great Pyramids in the 21st century. But Zahi wants you to believe that there were no ancient civilizations, that there, this was just slave work, slave labor, and I, you know maybe they built a ramp, right? I don't know if you guys have seen the numerous methods they've said that they used. Well, Zahi. Um, he has an interesting beginning, because he actually came out of a, a, a strange group based on Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce, of course, is famous for being a psychic, for uh, being able to, to picture people's illnesses through psychic means. Edgar Cayce also is a huge proponent of Atlantis, and he has done many talks on Atlantis, and he has constantly and consistently said this is true. This is true. Atlantis existed. The high civilizations existed. Well, Zahi Hawass was actually paid by the Association of Research and Enlightenment, Edgar Cayce's group, to go to the University of Pennsylvania to become an archaeologist. Curious notes there. Now, I went to the ARE, and I asked them about this. I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought Zahi was a strict, no uh, ancient civilization type of character. And they were like, well, yeah, that's true. 
And I'm like, but he gives talks at the ARE on Atlantis? And they're like, well, yeah. Uh, well, I guess we never really thought about that. <laughs> but he was there last year, he was there the year before, and he's showing up to give talks on Atlantis. So they're lying to you. There is an ancient story. There is an ancient past. And the potential of bringing this ancient past to life is too much for them to pass up. They are absolutely working towards this end. So, we find that there is uh, some sort of extraterrestrial connections to our, our ancient past. Uh, it seems to go to the stars Alpha Draconis and Sirius. And as you study more and more into secret societies, Freemasonry, you find that all of the ancient Egypt, Mayans, the Aztecs, uh, the Chinese, they all worship the star Sirius. She was known as Sothis in Egypt. Uh, Sirius is the symbol there you see that the Dogon tribe of Mali Africa use. This is from their ancient traditions that has been passed down throughout the ages, and they say it was the fish people that brought this knowledge to them. Now, I have been one talking about the merfolk for quite some time. <clears throat> we have a thing that is known as genetic memory. And we find that there are certain clues and keys around. Like if you go look at a building and you see an owl sitting on top of that building, that's not there for some artistic reason. That's there because the genetic memory of birds reminds them that they don't want to be anywhere near that thing. So you gotta wonder about the big frost bank building and the effects that it's having on our genetics <coughs> and the way that this works. Because these birds have never seen an owl, they've never been attacked by an owl, but their memory, their genetic memory, knows that owl is a predator. And that's why you put them up on buildings so that your birds won't poop on everything. So we too have this genetic memory and, and these secret societies have been passing down this knowledge left and right, uh, coming back and forth with the examples Oh, that's a different story. Uh, right down to Austin, Texas, where you have the merfolk standing out in front of the goddess Columbia. And of course, this was put up at the, the, the tower, the UT Tower, back in 1933 by a Freemason, paid by a Freemason. So it was an Italian artist, Copini, who was paid by, uh, oh, what's the name of the hall here in Texas? The biggest guy there. Mass. No, uh, shoot. Uh, what's the name of the fountain? Littlefield. There we go. Uh, he is the one who, who painted or paid to have this statue put out there, which you'll find the merfolk sitting there out in front, and you'll find the goddess Columbia, who is actually Venus. Now, of course, the goddess Columbia is in direct due, due relationship with the clock tower, which Charles Whitman decided would be a great place to shoot people, and many others decided it would be a great day great place to leap to their death. Uh, and of course, they die right behind George Washington, <coughs> who was also a lead Freemason. Uh, of course, the, the goddess in the Starbucks logo is, is the uh, Skyla, and this is, those are her feet that you see behind her head, not her hands. And this is how they used to explain sex with the fish people. Because the fish people, the merfolk, have been part of our story, part of the Atlantean story, and part of everything. But it also comes into our genetic memory. And so these men use these type of symbols to, to constantly encode us and to use it to trigger us in, in our genetic memories. But could it have an extraterrestrial source?